first question, why the radio gig? Well, they asked me, so I said, okay. I is mean, this I'm income? Is this entertainment no, for you? No, it's not income. Um, no, I don't get anything from this. They just asked me. and. So it's entertainment? It's, no, it's more than entertainment. It's informative. It's informative about things that are going on in the city of Detroit. It's informative about things that are going on nationally in Washington, D.C. It's informative about uh, things that... Um, programs that I have access to that maybe people don't know about, um, like um, Step Forward. A lot of people don't know they let their properties go three years without paying their taxes and they don't know that they Step Forward is back into existence, although they did stop it for a while in December, but they started it back up. So now people can go back instead of losing your property in the tax sale, you can go through Step Forward again and you can redeem your property. So there's a lot of information that I have. So my knowledge and wealth of information didn't start when I got on city council and city council is not gonna make my wealth of information disappear. Right, right. You know, callers are gonna want you to open up. You've been through a lot. How much are you willing to do that? I don't know, it just depends on what their questions are. I, I don't really wanna answer a lot of personal things because I've gotten used to my privacy again and I kind of want to keep it that way, I think. But one of the things that I, I do, one of the reasons why I picked you to interview me is because you are very accurate. You are, you don't exaggerate, you tell the truth. I mean, you, you reporters have to do what they have to do because you just can't be all nice. You gotta be some fluff in there too. But I figure if you're gonna tell my story, tell the story correctly. Like, you know, some newspapers said I I only been married for 25 years. Oh, I've been married for 27 years. Some newspapers said that I spent three years in prison. No, I was only there 20, two years and I was at a camp. And no, I didn't happen in 2011, it happened in 2009. And I've been home since 2012, not 2013. So, and I didn't get, convicted of bribery, I got convicted of conspiracy, where I pled to that. So if you're going to tell my story, tell the truth about my story. Don't make up what you want my story to be about. And that's why I kind of sh shy away from the Detroit News or Free Press, because when they say one thing, then they'll turn around and double back and say something different. So I don't care what it is about, about me. It could be a good story. They always turn it around and try to make it a bad story. So my life isn't just what happened on city council. I had a life before that, and I have a life after that. I, if this year, if I choose to stay in the situation that I'm in and we work, I'm, that's a whole different story. I'll be dean of the Congressional Black Caucus Spouses. I'll be dean of a lot of different organizations because the congressman is the longest serving member. So there's more to me than just that one little incident that happened. How painful is it to talk to you about those dark moments? I'm kind of beyond that. I think with God and my friends and my family, you know, I think it's basically um, self-acceptance. Self-acceptance that you fell down. And as a song by Donnie McClurkin, you fall down but you get up. It's only a, a person who keeps staying in condemnation and pity upon themselves and feeling bad about themselves that continue to stay down. And, God didn't make me a person that I have to stay down and be up under someone's foot all the time. He has a great plan for me. I don't know what that plan is and I'm working toward that plan, but I know it involves helping people. And so I have a place called the Help Center of Detroit. I bid on a building in this past auction and I didn't get it, uh, but it's okay. Cause that means that God, that's not the building God wanted me to have for my okay. center. So there are a lot of things that I have going on. I would like to write a book. Um, I got some offers for some TV shows. I haven't decided what I want to do. I don't want it to be as if a person is trying to exploit me. I want it to be whereas it's what I want to do. What's going to be good for me. What's going to feel good, make me feel good about what I'm doing. What legacy am I going to leave? Not just for my children, but for other women who come beyond, behind me to knowing that just because you went to a camp or went to a prison or a penitentiary that you can do, some, men too, that you can do something different. I want people to understand that just because you go to those places, don't sit there and do nothing. Don't sit there and do nothing. They have educational benefits for you there. I didn't sit, I was in an educational program every day. Okay. I did um, cosmetology. 
because I started that in high school and I didn't finish it. So I finished cosmetology. I did um, horticulture, I have a license in that. I did um, um, the chapel. I can teach cycling. I got a certificate in that. Um, wow. I love. It's called liberal arts. I love education. <laughs> I do. And any, all my friends will tell you, Monica's always in school. I love education. I, you know, maybe education isn't for everybody, but I love education. So I just think that if you if, if you get, find yourself in that type of situation, learn something while you're there so that you can come out and be a better gotcha. person. So now you are putting yourself back out there as a public figure by doing this. That doesn't necessarily make me a public figure. That makes me a radio personality. Okay. Um, we can argue that they're the same or they're different. It's a distinction without a difference, well, as you attorneys like to say. Yeah, okay. But I, it's a right. radio personality. And so, and, so but I'm not putting all of... I'm putting certain topics out there. Yeah. I don't have to disclose. You're going to be reserved. You're not going to let it all yeah, no. out there. Absolutely not. My children and my family and my mother and my friends would not appreciate that at all. At all. They've all right. gotten past certain things and they want to stay past that. And my sister, I made my sister, my sister recently passed and I made my sister promise that whatever I did, it would be to uplift other women. It would be to keep shame off our family, and it would be to the betterment of good. And as Joyce Meyer says, do all the good for all the people while you can. Is this to uh, affect your legacy and how you've been defined? Absolutely, because no one can define you unless you allow them, and I don't choose to allow the media to define me. So this is the continuing story of yeah, Monica Connors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, I'm going to attempt to hit on a couple of hot buttons. Okay. You and John recently renewed your marriage Well, vows. that's what you all call the renewal our well, marriage Well, what is vows. it? Straighten me out here. We just had a ceremony. It was something that I wanted that I didn't have, and it was important to me. And the effect of it is what? We're still working on that. Meaning? We're still working on that. Is it a, people might assume that means it's a troubled marriage? Well, you know what they say about when you assume things, right? Straighten me out here. Here's your opportunity. <laughs> no, because I want to keep certain parts of me personal. As he prides himself on personal staying out of it, I have committed that to my family that I'm going to keep certain things personal so it's not completely harmonious I mean you said we're working on it we're working on it so I mean those are your words I'm not saying it's harmonious I'm not saying it's not harmonious I'm saying that I'm at peace all right, all right. and you're still together we're at peace you don't want to say any more than that no I'll respect that he does this all the time. He's a perfectionist, which is why I love him. But he picks. You know, guy. last time I did this, I did it with. Uh, is it Aquanet appears? I don't know. I don't know. She first came. She's she has a she's sick. She's not on a radio TV oh, okay. story. Okay, I don't know who she is. <coughs> the black lady. I don't know who she is. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, Let's go back to your city council, your prison, and so on. Part of your definition, maybe the biggest part that you're, that you're wanting to continue the story is, it was a case of corruption. It was a case of you were on the take. It was conspiracy, was the charge, not bribery, but you did go to prison. That really does, in a lot of people's minds, still define you. No, that's only in small people's mind that that defines me because there's not one person on this earth that hasn't done something. Okay, but people look at you, you were at the top. Well, but, but what defines the, the top? To me, I'm still at the top. I, I passed the bar. Some would I'm, say you, you, you blew that opportunity. You bungled it. Well, that could be true, but that means that maybe that was not where God really wanted me to be. Maybe he wants me to be someplace else. But you're at peace with that. I'm at peace with that. You made a mistake and you've moved Everybody on. Everybody makes mistakes and I moved on. So you have what to. What regrets you, do you have? You have trusting people, trusting people who are in your inner circle, not allowing people, certain people in your inner circle, 
Um, How would that have changed things? You did what you did. It would have uh, changed a lot of things. Things different in certain aspect of my private life being a lot better would have changed things. I think one of the biggest things too is that I would like for women, older women to mentor younger women because I don't want there to be some woman that comes along after me and end up in the same predicament that I was in because of whatever she may be going through at the time and thinking someone really has her back and they really don't have her back and she being forced into doing something that she really doesn't want to do or taking a deal about something that she really doesn't want to do that she may not really know all the particulars about but some of the particulars about. So I think that mentorship for women is very important and when I try to get some mentors, women that I thought were um, could be possible mentors to me. I found out a lot of them had dated the congressman back in the day. So that wasn't very- Your husband, the congressman. Yeah, that wasn't a very good, I wasn't good at picking the people that I thought, you know, was would be good for me to pick. Well, wait a minute. How did they mislead you then? That opens a whole- No, not though the women. The okay. women didn't mislead me, but just if I had a mentor, younger i i didn't grow up in you know as quote unquote everyone says in um the certain parts of as my sister-in-law used to say that i wasn't from certain parts of the track although i never been in trouble before i pretty much did good at school um my mom and my mom and dad were pretty good people uh, my mom took us on trips all the time. Every summer we went on a vacation. I think personally that I had a pretty good upbringing with my parents and, um, you know, but no one's family is perfect, but I think that I had a pretty good upbringing. But you don't know what you don't know until you're in the situation to know what you don't know. So I just think mentorship is very good. I did have a program at Henry Ford High School when I was a city council person, it was called Divas. And I would like to start that back up again because I saw one of the, two of the young ladies and one's graduated from college, the other one's married with a baby and the other one, I'm gonna be working with her to get some things and help her find some things out for herself. But I think mentorship is important. All right, let me, I just wanna circle back because uh, I heard some vague answers there. Are you saying that if you had better people in your life during your time on the council, the the, the corruption, the scandal, uh, the conspiracy, the conviction, you would have had better direction. Exactly. And you would have made better choices. Exactly. But you still made your choices. I still made my choice, but I would have made better choices. With better advisors. Exactly. Better mentors. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Got that cleared up. Um, but I, I still hold myself accountable because okay. at the end of the day, I was the person who did it, who could have, who, who allowed those things to happen. Yeah. So I, I, I still have to be responsible for even my employees. I still have to be responsible. Uh, you have a law degree. You've passed the bar. You're working as a legal assistant. You turned this city on its side when you showed up. <laughs> a few months ago, and you're talking in court with Bob Bashara. God is good, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Two worlds collide. Yes, he was an. I'm not going to say. Do you know him a, personally? No, I don't know him. I've never. You were met there because you work with his attorney. Yes, and he just started talking to me, and it's so ironic. You know, I just finished real estate school, real estate one. So anybody who wants to go to real estate work school, real estate one is a very good place. Okay, all right. And um my um, instructor was telling me that she was the le she was the person who was going to sell Bob this house. But to there was his mistress, yeah. Exactly, but this was after I okay. had already oh, did yeah. that part, so I don't want that to right, get right. conscrewed as anything else, yeah. but he just started talking to me and I'm just listening, not saying a word, he just started talking to me. Surreal moment. I know, it was, I was like, so what are you saying? Okay. <laughs> and so you're still waiting for word that you can become an attorney, that yes. your license 
Yes. Is approved through what is it called? The Character and Fitness. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you know, I and I that do, stands where? I'm not gonna tell you because then it'd be calling the people. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it's pending. It's pending, and no good news. No news is good news. Okay. And most people tell me that in cases like this, it takes at least a year. So it's coming up on the year. And, you know, I've not gotten any trouble. I've done good. I've gotten good recommendations. So I'm pretty excited about it. You think it. you'll get it? Yeah, I do. I do. That's going to get a big headline. I, well, no, because you won't know until you see me in court practicing. Ah. <laughs> good journalists might continue to check. I'm, I'm excited about it. I really am excited All about right. it. Uh, down to two last ones. Another moment that defined you. Shrek! No, that didn't define me. That defined him. That didn't come off making you look crazy. No. Mm -mm. You don't regret it? Well, I won't say that I regret it. You always have regrets about different things, but I think at the time, I didn't call him that. I think it was on my mind because as I was walking through the corridor coming from the ladies room, I heard his staff call him that. And I said, who are you talking about? And they said him. And I guess in the heat of the moment that, you know, came out. So I wish it wouldn't have come out in that capacity, yeah. I'm learning from my son that, you know, and my friends, you can't always say what's What's on your mind? You gotta, you know, hold back. It's right. like, you know, the guy who murdered that family. I know at some point he thought that he should stop. But he was so far gone that he didn't. Yesterday you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to be like that. And he's killed before. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I just think that, you know, because so much is going on in our city, um, we need, I don't know why people are so angry. I, I don't. And if there's something I could do to make them not so angry with my help center of Detroit, I, I'm willing to do that. Because people think that only women have issues men have issues too. They do. And I think the difference, I'll tell you one thing that I would like to do, and I'm not a Republican and I probably get some backlash about this, you know, from people that You're I You're voting know. for Donald Trump? Heck no. You know, uh -uh. <laughs> and I've met him before, but no, I'm not. Okay. But I thought I, you were going to really make a news splash no, here. No, no, no. The no, wife no. of the no, dean of no, the U.S. House no, of Representatives no, no, is voting for Donald no. Trump. And I voted Republican before when I was in college. I didn't know any better, okay. though. But I did. <laughs> I did. I just listened to the people who you should vote for in North Carolina. So I yeah, did. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, but I think that um, our Michigan prison system needs some help. They took away education. They took away a lot of the apprenticeship programs. So basically, you're just housing people. Mm -hmm. And when they come out, they're in the same position that they were before they left. Whereas in the federal system, they have programs with the community colleges where the people come onto the campus and they teach them. And Governor Snyder, if you're listening, I'm all for it because I can tell you, I don't remember what state it was. There was a, a state representative who got convicted of something and went to prison and the governor of that state hired him to come back and help with the reforming of the prison system. And his justification was who else better would know what that system needs than a person who worked there who had been in another system. So I'm all for helping you, Governor Snyder, because I've had clients who have come out of prison recently and now they've gone back. They've been in there 20 years, 30 years. What do they know? Mm -hmm. After 20 years, you come out and they just put you on the street, no place to live, no ID, no nothing. So what do you know other than prison? So you do something else and you go back or you get back on drugs. What do you know? It's supposed to be the Department of Corrections. So, but they're not correcting anything. Mm -hmm. So Governor Snyder, if you're listening, I'm all for helping you. I'll cross bipartisan lines to do that. Anything else I didn't ask you? Here's your opportunity. You want to say what? I love Detroit. This is my home. 
I don't plan on going anyplace else. Uh, maybe I might one day get me a home in Florida and retire somewhere, but. I'll see you down there. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. But right now, I love Detroit. I love the citizens. I love the people. You know, if I've never said I apologize for my mistakes, I want you to forgive me for my mistakes and allow me to move on because that's my old life. Although you still keep some parts of you, but that's my old life and God has a new plan for me and I'm working it. And so I just want you all to be happy for me. Allow me to do that and, you know, to all my friends who supported me and people who wrote me, I just want to say thank you.